I'm Ryan from Make Test Battle, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an auto strife. Right. Hi, I'm Ryan from Make Test Battle, and in this video, we are going to be doing an XSW kit auto strife. If you've watched our video in the past about how to overhaul a strife, we're taking the next step and putting an automatic fire kit in. Uh, these kits are fairly new to the market, they've been around for maybe a year or so, but they're a really excellent way to take your strife just that bit further and make it, you know, a really nice pocket rapid strike, really. Or so, if you can't find a rapid strike. Or if you can't find a rapid strike. So in this video, we're going to be detailing mostly the XSW kit. So if you want to see a full in-depth tutorial on how to modify the flywheel part of the strife, check the card here for our uh, more in-depth tutorial on that. As you can see, we've done the motors, the flywheel cage, all of that's ready to go. And if you were going to keep going from here, you just wire up this switch, put that onto the plug and be done with it. But in this, we have this trigger switch, which powers this motor. Now, I will draw the circuit, but it's actually identical to the two switch rapid strike. We have our battery plug here, and that goes just as normal across to the common. This is the positive or, or whatever really color. That goes from the normally open to the motors as normal, but we also need to take from this, from this normally open, to that normally open. And then we go from this common to the motor here. We go back from the motor to our normally open. And then we go from these motors to that normally open. Then we go from this normally open back to the plug. Does it matter which way that goes? For it positivity? does. It does matter. However, if you get it wrong, you can take this out, flip it around, and then resolder it. Just test before you put your thing in that this gear turns clockwise. So the end result is that this will motor brake this switch when it's not depressed here, and then power it when both of these switches are depressed. Oh, yeah. motor braking. Exactly, because you, you want to get that motor braking so that the pusher stops when you tell it to. Now, because there's such a large um, gear ratio and there's a lot of bulk there, you'll find it will stop just fine without the motor braking, but it's nothing to add it in, so you may as well do it. So the first one I'm going to do is the wire that goes from the uh, rev trigger to the plug. So the way I do this is I will just lay the wire roughly in the right spot and cut it to length and then I'll solder one side that is non-essential in the length and then just cut it to the right dimension later. So this is much more wire than I actually need for this, but when the whole thing's done, I'll solder the plug glass so I can clip them both to the same length. The old adage is measure twice, cut once, but I measure once and cut twice and it works just the same. We should get a t-shirt of that. <laughs> measure once, cut twice. Let us know in the description, do you want a t-shirt of... <laughs> oh yeah, these are the t-shirts that we've been selling on Teespring. Uh, thanks to everyone who's already bought one. Um, the idea was to help Justin get to End War, but unfortunately there hasn't been enough support for that to happen, but I will still be at End War rocking my lovely MTB's t-shirt. So if you're there and you have one of these shirts, I would love that. You know, if not, who cares? So this is how I'm doing the one that's joining the two switches, because you also want to make sure when you're wiring that your wires are in the direction they want to go. So this is going to the plug, it's going upwards. This one is going to this switch here. Because I'm a bit of a pedant on how these things look, it's much easier to go between the two switches by connecting to the common tab for the vertical one. Because this is only the, the flywheel rev trigger circuit, uh, this does not make any difference. It looks much better when you go downwards for this off to the plug. I'm just doing that instead. It just looks nicer. I put the two switches in the right spot, and we want to go from this switch into the normally open of that other switch. Are which... you going to mount the switches first or...? Uh, no, no, no. So I'll do all of the soldering first, then glue everything in place. Because it's just a pain in the butt trying to solder the things that have already been glued in place. See, this is why handy hands are almost essential for soldering because they're really handy. What? I know, right? Something that's really nice touch to do when you're soldering Nerf things together is to make sure that there's no twist in your wire. So when you're joining these two switches, keep them in the right orientation while you solder them together. 
because that'll just make this um, the circuit just sort of fall into place in the right spot when you go to glue everything together. Because now these two switches naturally want to stay in the right orientation. If they were 180, it would constantly be trying to turn. So you can see now we put these in place. So the next thing we want to do, wire the flywheel positive to the common as well. So when you're soldering two things together, it's a little bit nerve-wracking because if you apply too much heat for too long, you'll melt the original solder holding the wire on. But if you just go slowly, carefully, you'll get to a point where you've completely melted the solder of your second wire around the first wire. It's quite a nice blob. Yeah. Worked out. Yeah. It's almost as if I'd done this before. If you mess it up, just try again. Measure twice, cut three times. <laughs> yeah. Measure twice, cut three times, apparently, because... I have soldered that and it is far too... Oh, I think I meant to go in from the opposite direction. Okay, we can flip that around. I'd be spoiling you people if I posted a video like every day. What, like King of Random? Does he post a video every day? Yeah, he now posts a video every day. Holy shit. I'll explain the circuit in a bit more detail after I've done this bit. Yeah. So let me explain the circuit in its state at the moment because right now we haven't actually put in any of the auto strife features except for the switch itself. As you can see, the wire comes in here, into the normally open, out the common to the flywheels, back to this, and then out here to the plug wire. So right now, this is just a strife. You could connect plugs like this and use this exactly as a strife. They, um, this switch, when this one is pressed, is having this plug energized. And so when we take from this plug and this plug out to the motor, when we click that, this will connect to this, go out to the motor, come back to this tab, and then out to the negative on the battery. And then when we let go of that, that and that will be connected, and there will be no energy input, and so it will motor break. So by adding the motor in here and here, we've completed our circuit. This thing sits in like this, and it's nice because it holds down those wires, but we need to connect to these two here and here. Now, I'm gonna do this, and chances are I'm gonna get it wrong, because if you put these the wrong polarity, this will spin backwards, and I'm not sure which way around to do it. And then I've made myself this. Uh, if you do a lot of flywheel stuff, I'd highly recommend it. It's literally two AA batteries with an XT60 plug. We are gonna try with this build, swapping the motor that comes with it, which I have no idea of any of the details about it, with an MTB Rhino. So in order to do that, we need to remove this pinion gear. And I believe... Oh. Never mind. You don't get a second. So we're just gonna have to really carefully remove this little gear and press it onto the Rhino. You know, there are specialized tools where you can twist it down and it pulls this off, but honestly, you can just sort of push it off with a pair of pliers. It's not on that hard. We just have to press it onto the new motor. If that starts to slip, we can glue it and Loctite it, but that should work just fine. Because these are gonna be running at quite a high torque uh, to pull against this spring, you might find that this actually slips on the shaft. So that is actually a concern in this build, but if that's a problem, it's a problem, and then you just have to fix it. So tiny. Yep, but it's exactly the same tinning process as normal wire. Okay, so when you're tinning the motor terminals on a motor, you have to be just a little bit careful not to actually short across the back plate of the motor, because this is metal and it will conduct. However, there is a small plastic piece that the uh, tabs themselves come through, so even if you put quite a large blob of solder, it won't usually touch. But even if it does touch, as long as it's not touching on both of them, then it's fine. All right, so we're gonna figure out what way the motor needs to be wired up in order to get this thing spinning in the correct direction. Because if we spin this by hand, we can look down inside the gearbox and see the gears themselves actually turning. I'm, I'm hoping you can see that, but it's actually quite easy to see in real life. So I'm just gonna slowly move this around like that and watch the direction of the gear inside, and then that will tell me which way the motor needs to be spinning in order to achieve that. So, when I turn this clockwise like this, 
the 90 degree gear, the teeth are going downwards. So in order for the teeth to go downwards, the motor needs to be spinning this way. And of course, this is looking at it from the back. So when we look at a this way's revolution from the front, that is spinning clockwise, which means we need the positive not to the red dot. Make sense? Because positive to the red dot makes it spin counterclockwise. And we can test that. Plug in our little AA battery. We can then put this guy in, and then we can put black to the red dot, and we can see it spins in the right direction. Look at that. Works in theory and in practice. Science! Science! No, wait, no, no. We have to write it down, then it's science. Well, a picture says a thousand words and you've got 30 frames a second, so that's like a PhD already. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing you're going to want to do when you solder this motor in is solder the wires parallel to the tabs as opposed to perpendicular like you do on the flywheel, because that'll make it a lot easier to fit inside the shell properly. Tin this guy up. When I tin my wires, it happens very quickly because my iron is very hot, but please don't force yourself to only take that amount of time when tinning because some irons, it just takes a long time. Should go in here quite nicely. And then we need to connect this wire to here, and then this wire goes down to here. Just cut that. This, this is the week in the life of the universe when Kofifi is a meme. Throwback. End of May 2017. Who's watching in 2019? Yep. Ow. Um, so in a rapid strike, uh, it's usually easier to wire to, um, to the actual motor terminal itself. But in this build, I went for three on the switch. So if you think about it, if you move this back to here, it actually makes no difference. Well, now we have quite a mess of wires to deal with, despite my best planning and intention. So I'm just going to wrangle this in. This is a nightmare. Yeah, this is why you try and do your best to get these things sort of path nicely. This is about the best that you can do it. Just because there's so many wires and the strife isn't got a lot of space to path these wires, but you can use these gaps to sort of hold things in place. And do not ask me to make one of these for you. Peace <laughs> off. So this is the circuit complete. Unfortunately, it gets a bit messy when everything gets tangled together, but before we glue everything in place and while we can still change the circuit, we'll test it. So I've gone and spent a bit of time resoldering and desoldering and just, you know, working it nicely so it fits in nice. And so this is what I've come up with. I've sort of got these three wires sort of like that, kind of curving around to the side and then going off to where they need to go. Uh, and then the red wires just go underneath and over the top. So now this is all in nicely. The next step is to just cut away small sections on the stock tracks so that these can fit in nicely. We really just need to trim down a little bit on this. So I'm just going to use the box cutter to do that because I don't want to break out the Dremel and have whiny high pitched noises. Because if I can avoid using the Dremel, I will. So we're still hitting it on the common tab. Take out a bit more. Obviously, as you do this, make sure you don't cut your cables. Or yourself. But especially not the cables. I'll just trim this bottom one because it's kind of getting in the way a little bit. So we also need to modify the trigger. We need to just get rid of this thing. There was never a spring and it's confused so many people, but I think they just took it out after the molding process was done because they realized they didn't need it. One of those little... That. And that should... Why is that? It's, oh, it's, it's catching on the top there. Ah, I see, I see. Well, anyway. No? Uh, just a big wedge. Yeah. Okay. Just rip it up. Excellent. So just a real quick safety note, uh, this is something that we haven't really been showing on camera when we do our videos, but when you're dremeling a lot of blasters and plastic, really loud noises, bits of plastic go thrown everywhere. So do make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and grab a pair of earmuffs. You won't notice the effects of wearing earmuffs for 20 years, but when you're, you know, got industrial deafness for things that you've done in your youth, you will regret it. Right. That's good enough.
We went to go plug in my hot glue and it was taking like forever because it's gotten old and shitty and we're like, it's probably going to be faster to go to the hardware store, buy a new hot glue gun and come back and set it up and what do you know, it was. That is, oh that is, oh that is nice. Oh, dude. I like Late good, night modern Ryan. I do like good tools. You can quote me on that. The right tool for the right job. You can just get it in I there. Think, wasn't this a discussion on one of the modcasts? That, um, hot modding, like hotline? What? Like a saucy modding hotline. Uh. That you could call up. Like that was one of the, our jokes we talked about on the modcast. Uh, do people want to see more modcast? I don't know. If you do, like... Click that like button. <laughs> Smash <laughs> that subscribe button. That's what you got to say in 2017. Smash and, that subscribe button. And tickle the notification bell. Seriously? You tickle the bell? Yep. Alright, so... Is that it? Well, pretty much. We do need to dremel some stuff out of the inside of the shell to get it to fit properly. But I just want to put on the plug. You cut about a centimeter and a half, two centimeters of heat shrink. So we've got this fresh XT60 plug. Now a little trick if you're trying to desolder something and it's not coming, uh, what you can do is melt a little bit of solder onto the tip of the iron. And because this is liquid, when you touch it up against something, the surface area will sort of flow around the existing thing, which gives you greater contact surface area, which will give you greater heat transfer. How come you call solder solder? Solder? It's not... Oh solder? <laughs> Who the hell calls it solder? Americans. Yeah, no, they, they, um, they pronounce it differently. Solder. Well, it's like a different, you know, intonation. What? Yeah, they're weird. Just, just go with it, Justin. No. We taught them about spraying a thing. I think we can... We Look, can Justin. Them. Aluminium. I'm gonna trigger every American. Aluminium. Also, Veritasium's one of his recent videos, he went and looked at the American Kilo, which the oh, cool. Americans have been using for over a hundred years to define the imperial system. Yep, the inch is also exactly defined from the metric system. So, it's actually quite huh. funny because when they changed from the imperial inch to what is, I guess, more technically the metric inch, the country shrunk like the width of America shrunk because even though the difference between the metric inch and the imperial inch are quite small, when you multiply that by the size of a country, it's quite large. So they actually have what is the, I forget the technical term, but it's like the reference geographic inch because the rounding errors just, yeah, killed the country. So pro. Yeah. My God, this hot glue gun is fantastic. That just heated up like instantly. I'll just let that cool. Okay, so now we just hook that around there and obviously you can see how this works. It goes around, the teeth just lock into that, push it out and then it jumps back. It's exactly like a stampede. But the last piece in the system is this little uh, spacer that just goes around here and then we screw that down with one of the large head screws. Now, you do have to spend a little bit of effort to tweak this part because if you screw this thing on too tightly, it won't slide back. If I tighten this up more, you'll see it can just stay there. So what I do is I tighten it all the way down and then just slowly loosen it until it jumps all the way back. Do you put lube on that area? Uh, you can, but... Um, Wow! This one has to go. Whatever. I think that should be enough. Okay. Is that gonna fit? Oh! Yep, there we go. All back together. Assemble! Avengers! <laughs> That's in place, 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 that's there. What is this? Can so this this piece here is the worker mag release. Uh, it's an alternative to the Gavin Fuzzy custom ones. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you like this look, you like this look. I still prefer Gavin's one. It's a bit longer, but this is injection molded, so. Put that in. Oh, wait. 
I wonder if the audience at home can guess what I forgot. Justin, can you guess what I forgot? Um, uh, the little tactical knob. Nope, oh, I forgot to screw in the flywheel cage. Flywheel cage screws are slightly longer. It's pretty respectable. MTB standard hallway industry standard range test. Pretty good rate of fire. That's not sting. That's good sting from this close. Yeah, I, I was really happy with that rate of fire actually. So I'm gonna use that setup in the future. If you put a honey badger in it, it's gonna be so double. It's that. too much. Way too much. You just you you burn through all your ammo really quickly. I've it's that... fun. Yeah. But you burn through your ammo. Let's really quickly. try a quick burst, like yeah. Yeah, control fire. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll fire a couple of single shots and then a few bursts, and we'll just sort of shoot out this mag to see how controllable it is. Pretty good. I mean, stock wheels, stock cage, 120 FPS, that's sort of the standard. I really like the rate of fire of this auto kit with an MTB Rhino Pusher. It's slow, controllable, single shotable, burstable, and yeah, really happy with it. I've been Ryan from Actus Battle. If you've liked the video, like it. If you want to subscribe for more of this content, do that. YouTube you spiel. And if you want one of these fantastic Make Test Battle supporting t-shirts, uh, follow the link in the description. Uh, until next time, I'll see you then. I just need to do the then talk. Yeah. Because otherwise you get the I'm Ryan, the strife itself, but you want to see a full review? Uh, full review. I've actually already tested it. Spoiler alert. I did get it right. Spoilers. So if you thought I was going to make a mistake, huh, I didn't. Or maybe I did and we just didn't show it. <gasps> what? I just found the best thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks Evan B. Grab these, they're, you know, 10 bucks. Definitely worth it. But, you know, I think it looks really cool. God damn it! <laughs> damn it, Adrian! It was Adrian too! Yeah, it was. What are you even, like, filming? Jesus! When he's not even here, he's disrupting our videos. Such a just, bad influence. He just has to be in everything now. Is... You've made Justin, like, like rap music. What's wrong with you? I liked You hated rap music. Hey, Eminem is rap? You need to go play in No, 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 I just was about to sneeze. Okay. So, a really... Im oh. In soldering, the preparation is the a really important... Oh, fuck. So, let me just try and explain the circuit now in the context of the diagram we just did. So, let me... Uh, no. Oh, with me, me. Fucking... We can end the video like that? Adrian! Stop it. Stop it. You're ruining Make Test Battle. No. Just, just like Ryan is ruining Nerf with HBA. Or as I like to call it, Nerf Ball. I don't like to call it that, that's something I just made up. Or is it? <laughs> it is. Or is it? <laughs> no, but it is. Isn't... Isn't, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> if you start HPAing Rival, it is Nerf Ball then. Yes, it's Rival Ball. Yeah, I have no intention to do that. I mean, thank you to all of our American friends who have sent us Rival stuff, but at the end of the day, it's just not practical here. We just can't get enough of the balls to actually use them. And it's literally in the Melbourne community, us and like two other people I know own them. And that's mm. it, so... Anyway. Actually, it's more like measure twice, cut twice. That'll be the t-shirt, like we'll have measure twice, cut once, unless, no, you're measuring once, cutting twice, unless you're measuring twice and then cutting three times, or it's all just indecisive. That can be the Justin version of the shirt, because <laughs> I know exactly what I'm about. No, you've changed your mind three times. You've changed my mind. You've misquoted me. I no. can sue you for libel. You have misrepresented me in the media. Fake quotes, I don't know. <laughs> this, this is the week in the life of the universe when Kofifi is a meme.
Kofifi was just born, people. Throwback. End of May 2017. Who's what? watching in 2019? Oh, is that, is that still a meme? If this is 2019, do you guys still write? Like, you know, who's watching in well, this year? Well, technically Trump is still president. Will people still remember? It's true, maybe. Kofifi 2020. <laughs> Kofi gate. Has... Nah. There's no feminists <laughs> involved, it can't be a gate. What? You know, like, Gamergate and all that, it's, it's all, like, feminism stuff. Uh, oh, Watergate, I don't know if feminists were involved in that. <laughs> I'm sure they were! It was Damn all it. their fault. Nixon's like, <laughs> I would have gotten away with it. If it wasn't for this meddling feminist. You know what's funny? I know a lot about the outcomes and the results of Watergate and, you know, like, what went down and, and all that. But I know very little about what actually happened at Watergate and why it's called that. So I'm gonna look it up. Leaves a comment. No. <laughs> No. Fake comments. I'm, I'm not gonna have world history explained to me by YouTube comments. Like, sometimes we teach Americans about themselves, like, <laughs> spring a thing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, how did you guys not even know that that was a thing? It's been confirmed by Drac. It's also confirmed by, um, a Boba Lolo. Yeah, spring a things. You guys need to get your shit together. Hot glue them in place, and then we're done. Before even Adrian gets here. Before even Adrian gets here. Onwards! Clock is ticking. Is Adrian? Come in. I if I left it unlocked. Yo. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. What'd you bring? Zeus tube. That's a pretty sick T-shirt. Yeah, I know, right? Get you side by side. Oh yeah. <laughs> Reppin'. Shit. Pretty sick, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crips and Bloods. <laughs> we need to make a MTV gang sign. That's a T. I feel like M we need more hands to achieve it properly. Oh, M T B. Oh, that was pretty gangster. I got chills. Then you have to make sure that you get a nice, you know, high quality worn in plug, or organic one salvaged from a freshly killed mod. Grab this one, it's fresh. No, this is just a, actually this is, this is a bit of history. So this is a really old style auto kit from, from Taobao once again. I don't remember the name of the guy who made this kit, but it used a really small motor. It's sort of vertical in the shell. And then it had this board, which was like a voltage converter. Um, it was meant to like be adjustable rate of fire by tuning that, but this just burnt out in about 10 seconds or something died in it. So yeah, not as good as just the, Simple XSW kit. The less magic boxes that are in something, the better. Look, I'm an aeronautical engineer, not an electrical engineer. Those guys can go and do their black magic somewhere else. The heathens. Well, I mean, they're very important heathens, but, you know. We're not going to let them integrate into society. No. They can work from the shadows. Exactly. Whoa, 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 magic of color, Justin. <laughs> Come on. We've been over this! Oh shit, we've been leaking. Oh wow, Ryan, you've been 3D printing. <laughs> There's any breaking force unless there's spinning. Can you stop making noise, please? Bad Adrian. Sit in the corner. Oh. Put on the dunce cap. No. <laughs> no. So mean. Look, we're just about done. I just want this thing over. I'm hungry. I'm tired. Do you need a nap? I need a nap. A, a rest. I need a, a dwink and a nap. You gotta go say, go say sorry to Adrian now. Oh. <laughs> so bad. No, I don't. Ha, ha, ha.